Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. Sorry if you hear that background noise. We have to have a fan running because the camera's been <laughs> overheating because it's so hot in here right now. Uh, all the humidity and everything. Uh, anyway, this video here that we're going to do, we got a 315. We have a charging station. And uh, what we've been getting a lot of people contacting us about is my mower, it's going to the charging station, but it's not charging. And people want to buy batteries, and they want to buy all these other parts and stuff. We, we appreciate the business, but we want to make sure that we're selling you the right parts to actually fix the mower. So we want to show you here some stuff to go through to make sure that the parts that you're ordering uh, are actually the parts that are going to fix your mower. Especially batteries, because batteries are number one, they're expensive, and number two, this year, uh, 2022, they've been on back order. A lot of the batteries, just you couldn't get them, and it would take forever to get them, so, you know, we hate to see for you, we hate for you to buy an expensive battery, you put it in your mower, you put the mower in the charging station, now the new battery's not charging either, and you still gotta buy more parts, or your mower just sat there waiting for a battery to come in, and then you get the battery, and it's like, oh, well that didn't solve it, now I still gotta buy more parts. And maybe that other part you're gonna order or gonna need is on back order now. So we're gonna go through this uh, kind of quick. You know, just give you the basics here, what you want to look for. You go out to your mower, out to the charging station. You want to look to see if the LED is lit up. That means that there's at least some power coming in from your transformer, low voltage cable, and into the uh, the charging station board. <clears throat> makes no difference if it's flashing blue or solid green. That is irrelevant when it comes to the mower charging. As you can see here, this one's flashing blue because I have no wires plugged into it. And when I push this mower in here, there you go. You get the tone, it made contact, this is charging. So unless this is solid red, solid red means that there is a problem with the charging station board. Flashing red, flashing blue, solid blue, flashing green. Um, Solid green, flat. where was that? Here, let me start over again. Flashing red, flashing blue, flashing green, solid green, solid blue, or if you have a 115H or one that gives you the flashing yellow light for a guide wire problem, that does not matter whatsoever when it comes to charging the mower. The only LED color um, that would matter at all is solid red. If it's solid red, you know there's a problem here with your charging station that you need to look into and address. Other than that, you just want to see that there's actually power here coming into it. After that, you want to get yourself a multimeter. And I've said this before in other videos, what you're going to be doing here isn't really all that crucial. You don't have to spend a ton of money on a good, um, a good high dollar multimeter. You're just going to check for basic voltage here. So one of these cheap ones from your local hardware store or Harbor Freight or somewhere like that will work fine for what you're doing. You want to make sure you have it test. You want to have it set to the right thing. We see a lot of pictures of people testing this stuff on uh, social media groups, and they say, "Hey, look, you know, I'm plugging this in here, and it's not registering. I think I need a new power uh, power supply or something." And the whole problem is they have it set to 20 for their DC volts. Probably should mention that on a transformer it says this is going to be 28 DC volts coming in here. So DC volts, you don't want to set it to 20 because you're looking for 28, which is more than 20. So you want to go to the next higher up setting above what you're looking for on this multimeter. It happens to be 200. So DC volts, 200, that's where we're going. And we know LED is on, so we have some power coming in here. We want to check to see what power is coming out at our charging contacts here in our charging station. So we're going to stick our probes in there. You can look in under there. You can see... The red wire, you can see the black wire, so you know which one's positive, which one's negative. And if we put this in here, like so, and like that, we've got ourselves 28 volts. So that is working. We know that we have the proper power coming through our charging station to go into the mower. If you don't have 28 volts here, you want to go back through and you want to check the components of your charging station. The first thing that you would do is take the two screws out of the, the front of your charging station cover there so you can take that off and you want to unplug this and you want to you want to come down here to the plug this is on a 300 series on a 400 500 series um, the plug would be down here in the bottom you unplug that there's a red wire and a black wire going into your main plug here you're going to stick your your probes from your multimeter the black 
into the one with the black wire and the red one into the one with the red wire and you should have 28 volts there. We've got 28 volts there. So we know that our transformer, our low voltage cable, that's all good. We've got 28 volts coming into our charging station board. Why it wouldn't be going out there would mean either this charging station board is bad or it's this harness here with the contacts. And we have a video showing you how you can test the, uh, the harness with the contacts. It's basic continuity test to make sure that there's not a lot of resistance in the wires. Plus, if you do a visual inspection and you see that the insulation is broken off of these wires, the bugs have been needed added or something like that, then you know that's not good. Um, also, if you see a lot of oxidation here on these metal contacts, you want to clean that up. You also want to check the contacts here where the wires connect to these metal contacts. And again, we have a video showing how to do all that and how to test all that stuff and what to look for. You can go back and check that out. But that's if you would not have the 28 volts coming here to your charging station contacts. That's what you do. You go working back through this way to figure out why you don't have it there. And again, we have videos showing how to test that harness, these charging station contacts. We have videos showing how to test the low voltage cable, how to test the um, transformers and all that good stuff. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on that, on those things. All right, so we know everything is good in our charging station. We push our mower in here. We push our mower into the charging station. We should get this audible tone saying that it's connected and it's charging. If we don't get that, then we want to look at our contacts on our nose of our charging station. Just look at them first. Make sure they're nice and clean. Take some sandpaper across them or something. Just to make sure there's some nice shiny metal there. You're getting good contact. If you push this in here, and then you get the tone that it's disconnected again. Then, if the mower's in there, in the charging station, and you get that second tone saying it, it's not connected anymore, you want to look at your LED and make sure it's still lit up because what will happen sometimes is it's too much load for the charging station board. Your charging station board, if you haven't had this apart and looked at it yet, probably has some dead insects arcing across there or some... Uh, you know, snail trail across there, some scuzzy stuff from some snails or whatever going on in there. And you want to take a look at that charging station board. That's 99% of the time. That's what the problem is when you put the mower in there and then everything goes dead. If you get that disconnected tone with the mower in there, your LED is still lit up. You want to make sure that you have power coming through your contacts and going into your charging station contact or your, your nose contacts on the mower here. Again, with your multimeter, you just want to check. You want to have this out, the mower out far enough to where you can check that, but still making contact in there. And we've got 19 and a half volts right there, so that is good. Probably saying, well, but this is 28 volts coming through here. Why would it only be 19 here? Anything between 18 and 20 volts is good. Even if it's 17, that means your battery is really low and it's starting to come up and it's starting to charge, hopefully. Um, this is an 18 volt battery in here and it's a maximum power of 20 volts. So seeing that that uh, 18 to 20 volts, that's a good sign there. That means that the power is coming from the charging station into these contacts and should be going into your mower. Now, the thing, from, the thing you want to check after that is you want to get back here to the mower and you want to use the quick info menu. We have a video showing this, so I'm just going to go right through this really quick here. You can go back and check out our other video if you want some more details on everything but bear with me here i'm going to try to swing the camera up here so you can see this better oh. all right get in there on that all right so you can be on this screen you can be on the menu screen doesn't matter we're going to hold down the zero button and go to info select okay and then when we go down here obviously to battery and you're going to bring this up and you can see we're at 18.6 volts, but the big thing is the current right here. 1,091, 92, 94 milliamps. That's our charge current. That's what's coming into the mower. So our battery is charging. So with that coming in there, you want to look next at your charge level. 1,394 milliamps. That's where we're at. It has a capacity of 1,600. So at 1,396... 
We're getting close to that 1600, which means that it'll be fully charged. If this is down around 100, then your battery was basically completely dead. Now, on a 300 series, you're going to have to give this thing some time. Even on a 400 series, you're going to have to give it a little bit of time. Uh, the 300 series just takes a little bit more. 115H, it's the same way. Let that thing charge up to where it's, it's up there around 1,000 milliamps before you try to remove it from the charging station. Because what will happen is, even though it has a charge in there, it won't have registered yet in the mower's memory, and it'll still think it's going dead. You'll pull this out. It'll shut off, saying the battery... Uh, the battery's dead. You put it back in there and it's going to show a thousand milliamps or you know 600 or somewhere like that And you're gonna say what the heck's going on? It's not dead. Just let it charge up. Let it charge up This will jump up to the 20 volts there But this is how you can tell that everything is working fine It's coming from your your transformer through your low voltage cable through your charging station through all the harnesses and the contacts and everything else and getting into your battery so that's the quick info menu. Um, that's how to tell you got power coming in there. If you don't see this power coming in here, and you've checked your your contacts here on the on the nose of the mower, you know you have the power coming in there, but it's not registering on that main board. Then you want to go back to checking out the stuff in the actual mower. Your harness inside the mower. Your plug here for your your charging station contacts. All stuff that we have videos on. Um, show you here on the bottom of this one. <coughs> contacts, your charging contacts, right here. This plug, you want to unplug that. As we mentioned before in other videos, the one for the 400 series mowers, the 450s especially, they had a tendency to melt. If you can't unplug that, then that's part of your problem there. It's shorting out. It's not allowing the power to go through. If you um, aren't getting power back to there, you unplug this, then you want to do a continuity test. Again, just like on your charging station, you want to go from the pin here for the brown wire up to the contact for the brown wire side of this harness, and then from the blue up to the blue again, just to make sure there's no resistance in that. We've had some of these where the wires have corroded up inside of the insulation. They were starting to corrode out here on the outside from all the, the rain and everything. And um, that could be causing your, your power not to be going through this harness, through this harness, and into your main board, and then into your battery. So you want to check that. If that tests good, that has low resistance in it. Next thing would be the harness here that goes from this plug back to your main board. To do that, you have to split the mower open. And luckily, <laughs> we've already got this one split open, so it'll save us some time. Pull that off of there. So now this would be the harness here on this one. It's brown on this 300 series. Uh, on the 400, 500 series, that would be blue. And then the new ones have two different color wires. But you would want to check from this plug back to this plug right here. You disconnect that from the main board and, and check to make sure you don't have any high resistance there from one end to the other make sure that's good and then you can see your battery is right there in this one um, on your 400 and 500 series mowers they'll be back here all wheel drives obviously the obviously it's underneath but you get what I'm saying you know you want to just test everything coming back through to your battery you want to make sure that if you have that power coming through uh, everything and it's showing on your main board which would be on your display. That means that the, the power is coming into this main board and you have everything working fine up to the main board. After that, it would be a matter of checking to see what your battery itself is actually doing. If you have, if you have enough charging voltage coming through from your charging station, through the contacts and the nose of the mower, through here, back into your main board, and it shows on your display that you have the proper current coming into it and that your capacity for your and your battery is rising you get it up there close to being full and it still dies out then you're looking at a new battery um you know but until you get to that point there's no sense in just jumping into all right i'm going to tear this mower apart i'm going to spend a couple hundred dollars on a battery and that's going to solve my problem because you've just seen that there's all these components in between <laughs> the battery and um and and the 
the outlet in the wall where the power is coming from. So it could be any one of those things that could be causing your battery not to charge. So just a, a few quick minutes to diagnose the situation, to make sure you're getting the right parts can make a world of difference. You know, again, we, we want to sell you the parts that you need to fix your mower, but we don't want to sell you the parts that you're just going to randomly throw at it and not be happy because it didn't fix your mower and then have to come back to us and buy more parts because you bought a bunch of them that you didn't need. So think it through, you know, one step at a time, you know, uh, it, it's got to be just like following water, you know, where's the source? You've got the pond at the end or the uh, the ocean at the end, but where did it come from? Well, you got to go back upstream to see where that spring is, where it's coming out of the mountain and the creek it's going down and all that stuff to get to the battery. You want to make sure that everything's got a good flow to be able to get to this before you just say, well, this is the, this is the end of the trail, so this must be the problem. Not quite, so... Hopefully this helps all you guys out. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Shoot us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. If you're looking for any of these parts that we just talked about here, or any parts in general for your automower, or accessories for your automower, you're looking to buy an automower, check out our website, www.roboticmowerservices.com. You can go on there. If you have any questions or need any more help, you can also contact us through the website. Um, there's links on there to send us an email from the website and all that good stuff. So that's going to do it for this video here. Hopefully this helps a bunch of you guys out that are having problems with uh, your mower's not charging. You get the basics now. And again, you know, it, it does get a little bit more technical here and there, but these are the basics of what to look for and what to check so that you can hopefully get this figured out and fixed up without having to uh, get a dealer to come out to your house or wasting a lot of time where your mower could be out there mowing. That's going to do it for this video. As always, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And thanks for watching.